Do you suck at flying your quad? Do you spend more time picking up pieces and replacing props than you do actually flying? Maybe you just bought an Eachine Wizard X220 quadcopter because of all the stellar reviews you saw on YouTube and thought that after flying just a few batteries you'd be zipping around your backyard like a pro. If you answered yes to all three then we have something in common. Or at least we did until I found this simulator. I've been flying my FPV quad for quite a few months now but up until now I've realized, I've relied, I've re relied, <laughs> I've relied, I've relied, I've relied more on luck than skill. So far, I have around five hours invested in this sim that we're about to talk about, and I've al and I'm already seeing a drastic improvement in my flying, particularly in my ability to confidently stay in control of the quad. In this review of the Jetstripe's drone on my phone iPad app, I want to share three key points with you. One, why simulators are great and you should buy one. Two, the positive things about this simulator. And three, the negative things about this simulator. And now I'll hand it over to Adam. Take it away. Thanks, James. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, that's James, my uh, new co-host. And yes, uh, very good points. And so let's kick it off. Uh, first of all, uh, I am in no way affiliated with Jet Stripes and was certainly not compensated for this video. Um, with that said, let's start with why simulators are great and you should get one. By the way, this is my Wizard X220. I've done a little modification. I basically flipped the motors, kind of, and turned it upside down. Flies pretty great. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and this is the one that I've been beating up a lot. And let's look at some flight footage right now as I'm yakking on about this to keep you entertained. So why would you want to buy a buy and use a simulator. Well, a simulator is going to save you time and it's going to save you money. Okay, and th those are the first big, big points there. It's going to save you time because, well, if when you crash, okay, not if, when you crash your quadcopter, you know, you're going to have to replace props, you might break parts, so you're going to need to spend time repairing the parts or um, ordering new parts and waiting for them to get to you. Um, also, you are going, every time that you crash your quad, you're probably going to have to get up from the chair that you were sitting in and walk maybe you know, 30, 100 yards, however far, uh, to where you, you uh, crashed your quad. And you might have to find it if you, uh, if you crash in some bushes. Um, in addition to that, there's batteries. You're going to need to spend time charging batteries and swapping out batteries. And on a simulator, all you have to do is press the restart button. So it's also going to save you money in, again, buying new parts and, uh, and when you break stuff, you won't be spending money on props. You also won't have to spend as much money on batteries, either uh, replacing batteries or uh, spending money on, say, you want to, you know, you need to get 10 batteries so that you can actually um, have a good amount of flight time because usually you only get eh, around, right around four minutes of flight time depending on what you're doing and what your setup is. So batteries, that's going to be a big thing. And then also uh, travel. Spending the gas money to go out to the park or wherever you fly. And, uh, and then, of course, the, the time to drive there. So that is why you, the, those are some of, the, uh, some of the financial reasons, financial and time reasons why you'd want to do that. Uh, a simulator also helps develop muscle memory and hand-eye coordination and basically just your reflexes. Um, and it gets you used to kind of how the quad works. Now, generally it won't be exactly like flying in real life, but it will be very much close enough so that you can get a feel for what the quad does, how it works, how it behaves. And <clears throat> also, uh, this way it's a consistent controlled environment so you won't have to uh, deal with wind and you won't have to deal with um, your environment changing, you know, changing the, the lighting condition and that sort of thing. So that way you can really focus on actually uh, building up that skill and then you can apply that in the real world and then, you know, come across those, those problems once your skill improves. And then also it just allows you to kind of fly crazy. You can do some stuff that you would not do otherwise and you'll probably crash in the simulator and as you would in real life but then you can learn and all you have to do is hit the restart button and then you're good to go. 
All right, so I think you get the idea. A simulator is a great tool for learning how to fly your quadcopter, as well as RC airplanes. Now let's take a look at this app. This is the drone on my phone simulator app. And unfortunately, it is only for the iPad. So if you don't have an iPad uh, or an iPhone, um, you are out of luck, which is a bummer. And I wish the Jet Stripes folks who make this would uh, make a version for Android. That would be super duper. Let's get into the simulator. We're going to click on challenges here. The stadium and the mall are the two levels that you get with the kind of add-on that you uh, pay for. That's the that's how, what the four dollars is. These two come with the free version. Let's go to the stadium, and these are some different. Uh, each one has different, basically just different tracks that you can choose. Uh, the stadium has a few line of sight levels. Don't really care for those at the moment. Um, and so let's just go to this one here. Let's talk about the menu because it's a little confusing and then we'll fly around and talk about all the other stuff. So here's the menu button right here. So there is the menu there. And then you have these little arrows that pop up. And so what you have, let me go to the main menu here. All right, so boom. Click on that, there's the menu. You have your rates and expo. That's something that's cool because you can change your rates and expo for the throttle, pitch, roll, and yaw. And you can have a, uh, a high rate and a low rate and then um, and, and change all that stuff. So it's, it's pretty neat. You get to play with all that. And then you have a little high and low rate button right here so that you can change them. The low right now I have a set to 70% and then the high is 100%, whatever that means. But that's, that's as high as it goes, 100%. So, um, and you will see that's actually not very high rates uh, compared to what you may, may have on your quad in real life. We have drone mode. Drone mode is just the difference between uh, acro and stabilization mode, but we want on acro because that's what we're, for the kind of flying that we're going to be doing. Camera tilt, that's cool. You can tilt it anywhere between uh, 50 and uh, some number of negative degrees. I haven't checked to see how far negative will go. And I usually keep it at, at 45 degrees unless I'm trying to go super fast and then I'll, you know, uh, increase it to 50. So that's really cool. Let's see, high, low rates. That's uh, that's just the same as this button. I don't know why they did that. And then, let's see, yes, that's so that's all of it. Just four, uh, four basic options there. And you can play around with that. I like it. It's good. It has, you know, just enough of, of what you need for a beginner to kind of play around with some stuff. So let's uh, let's fly around. So what are some of the positive things about this simulator? Well, the first of first of all, it's cheap. You know, it's it's four dollars. I mean, you can get the free version, but you're just kind of stuck in a basement in the free version. Um, and then you get these other two levels, and for like four dollars, and you can fly around and have a great time. And you know, it's it's it's. What more can I say? It's it's for the money. It's it's ridiculous. Um, also, it's portable. If you know, I'm using this on an iPad, and that's pretty cool because I can take the iPad pretty much anywhere. Whereas if I had a uh, big PC and a transmitter connected to it, you know that that limits the mobility of where you can fly and when you can fly. <clears throat> and this way, it's super easy to to uh, pull up the app and start getting in some uh, some sim time. Um, some other things, let's see, it's so dark in here, I can't read my notes. Uh, so it's cheap, it's portable, it's simple, it, it, it has the instructive training scenarios on the, uh, the, um, the beginner skills level that you get with the free version, you can check that out. It kind of teaches some skills uh, piece by piece, how to hover, how to turn, how to use the pitch and the roll and whatnot. Um, the levels are not very detailed and the graphics are not great. That is a good thing in my opinion because that means that the computer doesn't need to spend a bunch of time trying to process all the graphics that make it look all nice and amazing. Um, because it's very frustrating when you have a, uh, a an app or, or a game on a PC or, or whatever and you, you just want to you want to fly around and you don't really care how it looks but it's trying to process all the graphics and and then it ends up running slow and you know I don't I don't like that so <clears throat> so I think that's a uh, I think that's a good thing all right so that was the um, gymnasium or stadium or whatever they call that let's go back let's check out the mall uh, let's see here let's start right there yeah uh, no let's start there sure doesn't matter no that one Again, uh, this is just one of my preferred ones. Um, so y they have different tracks that you can choose. The, the mall's pretty cool. 
Um, you know, none of these levels are expansive, but with them all, it, ha it has uh, some definitely a lot of obstacles that you can fly through. And all of these different tracks, it's pretty cool because then you can actually, you know, kind of uh, race to beat your own time. And unfortunately, they don't have a, a time log, so you can't tell actually how many hours you have logged in the simulator. Uh, no! And then you can restart just like that. But it is cool because they, they have a little time timer up here at the top right corner. And you can uh, basically race yourself, which is actually surprisingly useful. I would think that you know you wouldn't really need it to when you're just learning how to fly, but it does kind of it does kind of help you to improve, definitely to improve your skills, because you kind of go, well, you know, how could I how can I go faster? And how can I have more control? And how can I, you know, all that stuff. So that's that's uh, that's pretty neat. So one of the negative things, I think one of the biggest negative things about having it on the iPad is you don't have a, the tactile feel of the sticks on a transmitter. You, uh, you, it's just kind of, sometimes you, can, you might go, if you go too far, you can't really tell. There's, there's, it's hard to tell, you know, where, when it, when the sticks bottom out, it's, it's kind of weird. And then sometimes, um, it just doesn't. It's not as precise, essentially, and uh, so that's that's not good. But you st but you still get the muscle memory of you know okay I, I put point the stick down and it goes forward and I you know push up the throttle and it goes higher and you know kind of how to how to control the quad like that. So I think that is a very good thing. The um, <clears throat> the quad behavior and well also kind of the the physics of the game. But this particular quad is it's kind of sluggish, which isn't isn't bad if you're you know first learning how to fly, but just that it may not fly like the quad that you have in real life. So it's uh, that's something to kind of keep in mind. Like there's really not a whole lot of power. If you try and do a punch out, it's it's pretty feeble really compared to uh, you know say like a like a five inch quad on a, on a four cell. Um, you know, forward speed isn't isn't too bad, and so you can kind of get learn how to to control the quad going forward fast. But you know, if you're trying to give it a lot of throttle to rescue yourself from a free fall or something, eh, it it just just keep that in mind that it it may not be exactly representative of how your quad behaves. And then of course, um, I mean, you know, again, it's simple and that's great and it's cheap. So that, that is something to keep in mind. However, you don't have other customizations, uh, like you can't do any PID tuning, you can't, well, there aren't any other quads to choose from, and, um, and then of course the levels are not, um, not incredibly expansive. You know, but again, you have to remember that the, the cost of it is, is ridiculously cheap compared to uh, other simulators. So anyway, in closing, this simulator seems to be well worth the money. Uh, for beginner quad pilots, I highly recommend it. I know this has helped me a ton, uh, just getting smoother with my flying, and I know I have a long way to go, but it has really improved my flying dramatically so far, and it's just, it's just been, it's, it has been absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and you know, one of the biggest things, just as a tip from one beginner to another, is throttle management is just so huge flying quads and it really helps to have a simulator to practice that and uh, to just really understand that whole that whole concept that is so different from uh, from flying an airplane and uh, this this has been extremely helpful so thank you for watching if you stuck through this whole video don't please uh, share this video and uh, like it if you think that uh, that this would be something good that for a beginner or for yourself you're learning how to fly a quadcopter please subscribe to see more videos and i'll see you in the future thanks for watching bye